Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGuardGuard.com. In this video, we are going to look at the immediate window of Excel VBA and look at five different ways of using it. Now, the immediate window is great at helping us write our macros. It will help us step through, check and debug our code. And there are many reasons why you would want to use it. And we're going to look at five in this video. So the first thing we need to do, or I need to do right now, is open up my Visual Basic editor. So let me click my Developer tab and Visual Basic. And at the moment, I do not have my immediate window visible. You may do on your screen. To view the immediate window, I've kind of just said it, we need to click the view menu at the top and immediate window. And you can see control G is the keyboard shortcut if you're a fan of shortcuts. And when you click on that, it should dock itself in the bottom right hand corner, which is its default location. And at the moment, as you can see, it's just a blank box, but it's about to do some pretty incredible things for us. Now the immediate window gets its name because when you type your statements into it, the results are immediate. And possibly the most common reason people use it, it's to ask questions of your code in there. So let's start with that demonstration. I'll just restore my window so that you can see my Excel workbook behind it. It's a basic workbook. I've got the number 500 in B2 and I've got four sheets named. Now, if I want to ask some questions about the current status of my macro or of this workbook or worksheet, I simply start my statement with a question mark and the immediate window nodes that I'm asking it a question. So, for example, I could type active workbook dot worksheets dot count and when I press enter, it reports back to me how many sheets are in this workbook. Bear in mind that I may be doing this with a, a big written macro. The examples here will be quite simple because there's no point in making something overly complex. But I guess the more complex something is, the more help you're going to need. And that's where the immediate window steps up. Of the current active workbook, there are four sheets. How about the current sheet? question mark active sheet what's the name of the sheet being used in my code right now it's april or i could click on cell b2 here and switch back to my code and i could ask about the active cell or i could have just written range b2 uh, dot value what is the value of the active cell it is 500 now, that's possibly the most common reason you see people use the immediate window during your code, during your, your debugging or as you step through it. It's just to ask questions about the status of, of the book, the sheets, the, the values, you know, the variables. Uh, so that we can see what's going on, especially when this stuff is kind of hidden from us. OK, let's look at why else we may want to use the immediate window. Now, another really common reason to use the immediate window is to print information to it. So I've got a simple macro on my screen that is just looping through the sheets of this workbook. You know from the previous example that there are four sheets in this workbook. And typically you'll be doing something to these sheets. At the moment mine isn't, it's just moving between them, <laughs> which is not a very good macro. But maybe I've got a macro here looping between every single sheet, doing something to them, and I want to double check that it's actually going to each sheet, that this loop is working. I want to check that. Now, a very common thing you may see people do is put message boxes in their code. So at a certain point or points of their code, it displays a message to you, and people use this so they can see what their variables are doing or what the value of a cell is at any given point. And that's fine, you know, that's a clever technique. But you have to keep closing down that message box every time. An alternative is debug.print. And this tells 
the macro, it tells Excel to print the information into the immediate window. So I can see it there without having to close down any boxes or anything like this. I can watch my macro progress before my very eyes. Now I want to check that the sheets are moving. So I'm going to put SHT, which is the variable I'm using for the worksheet, dot name. Show me the name of the worksheet every step of the way. I'll click away from that and go into my F8 to start stepping through my code. And as it steps through, it prints. You can see it say April in my immediate window below. And then it steps back round again, prints again, and again, and again. And we'll do that each time as it's activating through the sheet. It's showing me information. I'm viewing the name of the sheet. This could easily be some value of a cell, some color of a cell. You know, any kind of property of an object that you may want to know. Okay, another example of the immediate window is to execute code, to actually execute the code. So I've got my April sheet open in the background at the moment, and I'm going to do a couple of demonstrations on this. Um, let me start by looking at protecting the sheet. You can see at the moment that this sheet is not protected. If it was, it would say protect sheet on here. So in my macro, in the immediate window, if I was just to type a statement into there, like active sheet dot protect, and I won't worry about any kind of properties or anything to that, and press enter, that actually executes that code. So if I switch back to my sheet and my review tab, it now says unprotect. I just protected that sheet through the immediate window. Now that can be useful if you just want to check uh, what you're writing before you actually put it into, before you actually implement it in your macro. So once it's in a, a massive macro and it's harder to debug, you may want to type that line on its own. Does it actually change the color of that cell or protect that sheet or hide that sheet? Whatever it is you're hoping it to do, does it work before you actually put it into the real deal? Now, maybe for one more example, I'll just click unprotect and I'm going to write the name. Uh, let me just put something silly like Billy in cell A1. And I'm going to put the value of A1 as the name of the sheet instead of April. As a, a simple example, a bit of a silly example, but whatever. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to put active sheet dot name equals range a1 dot value put a value of a1 as the name of this sheet i press enter and in the background i'm sure you can see in that bottom left there the sheet previously known as april has now been renamed to billy so i wanted to do another example i'm changing uh, values you know on, on sheets using cell references i'm using some commands up on the ribbon with the protect but the fact that we can actually execute lines of code down there whether assigning values or performing methods is can be really really useful okay continuing with our immediate window examples we're now going to look at how you can check the status of a variable but more importantly change its value. So I've got an example of a slightly bigger sheet in the background this time. It's a list of you know, rows basically, but it's kind of memberships, uh, customers, that's the idea. And for some reason there are some blanks. And we have a macro that's job is to delete the blanks. Uh, but maybe let's say that that blank row is not really in there. Let's get rid of that. Let's keep this one further down in this demonstration. And I'll go back to my code. Now, if I want to check if this code's working, or maybe there is a problem, 100%, and I'm trying to kind of debug it, if I start stepping through my code, you know, this is fantastic. It's, it's stepping through, it's doing its thing, are you blank, no, are you blank, no, are you blank, no, and it keeps going through. Now, this is great, but on the sheet, I can see that the blank row is not until row 14. So I've got a, you know, a bit of progress to do before I get to that point of pressing F8 continuously to get there. 
And to be honest, it wouldn't take that long. It wouldn't take me that long. But, um, you know, I want to check whether my macro works at the point it meets the blank cell. I want to check it then. You know, there's no point checking these first 12 people. I know they're all right. And I know my code is all right. That's already been noticed. So I want to skip to that point. Now, in the immediate window, something was kind of covered already in the first example. But I'll repeat again here because I didn't do a variable example back then. Is I could put my question mark and put R, which is the name of my variable track in the row number. And if I press enter, it's going to tell me the row that I'm currently checking. So I'm currently on number four, which is Antonio Marino. So because I can't really see that at the moment in my code, the fact that at any point I can just question my macro and say, well, what row are we in right now? What row are we testing right now? And it's number four. Or we're about to test right now, to be honest, number four. But maybe I need to you know, skip along. I want to test 14. Um, then we stop one previous at 13. But, you know, I want to test 14 or whatever. So I could just put in my immediate window R equals, let's say, 13 and press enter. And I've now just assigned that. So if I now query it, question mark R is 13. So I've skipped all that junk in between that I'm not really interested in in this current moment in time and I can test the moment that I believe my macro may be falling apart and it may be having a problem. So this could be another really useful thing about the immediate window, being able to change the status of a variable mid-stepping through the code. I have to skip a chunk or to test a different value before you start writing it into your code and then stepping through it again. You know, and also just to clarify that we can question the status of variables as well. I did say it in the first example, but I didn't demonstrate it on screen. I wanted to make sure I did that. OK, so we have come to the last example of the amazing immediate window. And in this final example, we're going to look at how we can use that immediate window to actually execute a macro, to run a macro. Now, we know that we can always run a macro either by using the button that may be on our sheet or our toolbar. But we've also got our run macro button at the top and our keyboard shortcut F5. But what they won't allow you to do is to change or accept the parameters of the macro. So if you've got one like my simple one on screen, then I can't just run it in the same way. I need to provide this, this parameter. Now, this is a simple macro again. It's just changing the background color of a cell, uh, the interior color of a cell. And within the macro, it's asking you what color do you want to use uh, with a, a long data type. So in my immediate window, you can see in the background at the moment the active cell is B2. So I'm hoping to change the color of that cell with 500 pound written in it. And I simply run my macro by typing the name of it, change color. Open bracket, and you see it prompts me for the color that I want to assign. And I've already set this up, this example. Don't Please don't think for a minute this is coming off my head. But this is the index value that of a color that I would like to assign, which is a, a shade of blue that I've checked just before running this code. Oh, sorry, yeah, doing this video. So when I press enter, that now runs that. And you can see in the background, the cell has turned that beautiful shade of blue. <laughs> so simple example, but you know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy to put a point across. That will show the immediate window actually running entire macros. This is just one simple line. But the advantage of doing that is you can also assign parameters with it. So you can test how an entire macro would work on a given cell, sheet, book, before you actually run it within the macro. You know, before you actually write your change color and run it for within that macro. Test it out first. Is it working? If it works before you put it in there, you know it's not that macro's fault or, or the state of the cell's fault. It's what else is going on in that macro. Maybe a variable or something. OK, so that is the last of our immediate window examples. I hope you can see the benefits of it and how this may help you write, you know, clean, effective uh, macros and help you troubleshoot them 
should you run into any problems in addition to any other debugging methods that you may already know. Thank you for watching. Please check out some of our other YouTube videos and come check us out at computergargar.com.